Okay, welcome back to Score on Business, still with, with Jason Palmer of Unified Payments Group. So, Jason, a moment ago, you were talking about PCI compliance, and it, it's, it all sounded pretty complicated. It sounds to me like smart companies are not going to do it in-house. There's a zillion companies that will do it for them. That, that's correct. Um, most companies today, you should, you should not be in the business of storing credit card numbers. And it doesn't get you completely out of PCI, so you still need to be PCI compliant even if you just process and transmit. Mm -hmm. But it greatly reduces your scope and it makes it much easier to become compliant. Um, and when you talk about outsourcing it um, mm -hmm. using tokenization, which is probably the, the most preferred. You can either outsource the, the first thing I would recommend is outsource your entire system. But if, if you're not going to do that, you're too big, you need more flexibility, you get to a point where you want to control the system, you should definitely outsource um, the tokenizing of the cards. Right. And this is something that even multi-billion dollar companies, mm -hmm. they're tokenizing too. So th this isn't just something small companies are doing. Nobody wants to be or really, unless it is your business, you should not want to be in the business of, of uh, securing and protecting a card. Yeah, and, and that would be something you would help your clients with Yes, as we, well. Yes, we do do token, uh, tokenization. Okay. So, when it comes to payment security, and keep in mind, a, a lot of the um, viewers of this show are going to be, you know, they're, they're going to be five-person companies or three-person companies. There's not going to be a lot of, of IT sophistication. So let's say that, um, that they want to take cards, they want to be able to um, take them point of sale. At a high level, what are some smart things for them to do? So they want to be able to take it, say, on their, their iPad or their phone um, or when a customer is in the they, house. Yeah, they want to go uh, and partner with a company that, that does that. We can do that. Uh, there are other companies out mm -hmm. there. Um, and you know, and there's some trade-offs with some of them are, are more expensive than others. Yeah. I would recommend, though, if you're going to do that, also try to get somebody that will enable surcharge for you um, yeah. and make it cost a little bit less. But you, you don't want to be writing that system. Um, and you want to get a terminal that it's PCI approved right. uh, from a company that is PCI approved. Uh, and then you can follow their recommendations. And if you have questions about your network and what you need to do, you can ask mm -hmm. them and you can ask your acquiring bank. Okay. Okay. That makes Okay. Um, so kind of, of moving away from the payments industry, what should small companies be looking at in terms of technology? Um, so this is is really the same as the last time that, that I came to talk to you, and it's it's important to drive it home. You don't want your your internal IT people, especially small and medium businesses, mm -hmm. focused on the utility of IT. Um, so what that means is, you know, it, treating you. IT as a utility like an electric company, right. and you don't want them focused on that. That should be outsourced to an MSP. Let your IT people, the, your technical people, be working on ways that you can better interface with your customer or improve uh, whatever your core business is. Mm -hmm. That's where their focus should be. And let somebody else run your day-to-day -day IT operation. Yeah. Because you're not going to be able to do it better or cheaper than them. Uh, if, you, if you think about it, you, you don't go out and try to generate your own power to save a couple pennies. Yeah. Um, you buy it. You, you don't even worry about that because that's not what your business is. And kind of the operational part of IT falls into that, that bucket. Uh, the next thing really is, is security. Um, and I think I've said it every single time I've been on here, yeah. two-factor, two-factor, two-factor. Right. If you have not yet put two-factor authentication on your email, um, you are behind at this point. You are, you are right. very behind. Uh, this, is, this is one of the top ways that people are um, getting in and then performing other attacks after that, like spear phishing attacks. And yeah getting people to give up more information. But two-factor is, and it's not hard. It's not hard, uh, it's not expensive. Um, y y it's, there's really no excuse at this point for not having two-factor. Um, you should have it on your bank, 
Uh, you should have it on, on Amazon, uh, but really, definitely on your email, because there's so many times that people just say, well, it's only email. You know, there's no yeah. financial impact to it, or but there really is when they there send is. an email as you to yeah. somebody and then they write a check. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there, yeah. So, um, okay. yeah, that's one of the, the biggest things. Um, you you want to make sure, obviously, that your, your backups and they're not on your network where they can be encrypted, mm -hmm. um, where if somebody comes in, and if you're using a managed server, service provider, this should be happening, but you probably just want to ask the question and make right. sure that About you're that. able to survive yeah. a ransomware attack. So we are out of time for today, Jason. Thank you so much thank for Thank you being for having here. me. Ladies and gents, we will see you next week. Bye now.